Hi there, Coach Sage of SageRunning.com here. The quick training talk on marathon pace strategy, running 26.2 miles, 42 kilometers, how to pace it most efficiently for your fastest time. So I've done a lot of talks on this. Uh, you can check out our playlist below. I've been doing YouTube video tutorials on running form, running tips uh, for a long time, years and years and years. But uh, the basic strategy for any distance race, usually, uh, especially a marathon, this is really important because it's a long distance race, is to do what we call even pacing. That is, you start off and you try to run consistent mile or consistent kilometer splits uh, throughout the whole race. Now, if it's your first marathon, you're probably gonna wanna have to kind of extrapolate from your half marathon PR time. And we're gonna assume that you have run a half marathon. Maybe you did it as part of your buildup, as part of a long run, 13 mile long run uh, before your marathon, or maybe you've raced some half marathons before moving up. So it's a good indicator kind of roughly of your fitness. And it does depend on your weekly mileage, how much you've been training, how specifically you've been training for a marathon, because marathon is a totally different beast than a half marathon. But let's say you run about a, 145 or no 140 for the half marathon uh pretty fast uh, nice time uh and you've been training pretty specifically for a marathon well we could say maybe it is possible for you to put two 145 half marathons back to back uh to get you with a 330 uh time finishing time uh so you know that would be a really good conversion and there's different calculators uh like i said out there that you could kind of plug it in but uh generally if you double your half marathon personal best time and then add uh, about 10 minutes, that is, that's kind of a rough indicator of maybe what your potential is in the marathon. Now, a lot of people, when they run the first marathon, they, they're not able to do that. They're, they, have to, they have to add maybe 20 minutes, double their half marathon time, then add 20 minutes. So that might be a more realistic pace, especially if uh, you have a rough last half of the marathon or the rough last 10K, which is very common. People bonk, and we try to avoid uh, falling apart majorly and slowing down in the second half of the marathon. So that's why uh, I'm going to point out some strategies and tips but if you have that rough idea of what your marathon pace could be uh, that's just one way to go about it and obviously if you do a lot of half marathons you get more experience that's a good way to set yourself up for a more successful marathon and a marathon time that's going to be closer to your half marathon pace it's obviously not going to be uh, as close to your half marathon pace unless you're really an experience of the half marathon and sometimes you hear those stories of people that run their personal best for a half marathon during the marathon race but generally you're looking at your marathon pace strategy for race day, uh, you want to start out conservatively. Start out slower than you think in that first 5K or first 10K. For sure, you don't want to start out too fast. If you're 10, 20 seconds mile too fast or 15 seconds per kilometer too fast, that's going to come back in, in exponentially in the second half. You might slow down at a rate that's two or three times slower uh, or you know, 30, 40 seconds per mile slower in the second half of the last 10K because you went out too fast and you put yourself in a hole early. So it's all about efficiency and reserving your stores. You could always speed up later in a marathon. So use that first 5K or 10K uh, to run your goal pace or to run even slightly slower than your goal pace. You might be weaving through some traffic because uh, you're warming up. You're still warming up into the race. You got plenty of time. It's a long distance. You got to pace yourself. Number one mistake most beginners make, they start out way too fast. If you feel good, you get in a groove after a couple miles, uh, you start laying down, you, you try to put time in the bank, money in the bank. Well, that doesn't work in a marathon. You don't bank time. Uh, it's You're probably going to slow down a lot if you go out too fast because it causes a lot of muscle fatigue, but it also burns through your glycogen uh, carbohydrate stores in your muscles and liver uh, too fast. And then if you go really, really too fast, you could go uh, over your lactate threshold. You start developing lactic acid, which is going to slow you down instantly. Uh, so, you know, keep your breathing under control. You should be able to chat and carry on a conversation even. Uh, for at least for the first couple miles and note your splits try to run even splits so you know if your goal pace is eight minutes per mile try to hit about eight minutes per mile an 810 would be okay a 755 would be okay but don't go running you know 740 per mile pace because that would put yourself in a hole so you could always speed up later on in the race if you still feel good or if you feel like it's too easy so try to hit that first half try to hit the 21 kilometer mark uh, right around what uh, you want to, if you double that time, is what you want to finish in that time. Now, a lot of people, they're going to positive split. That means running the second half a little bit slower than their first half. Most people actually run their second half way, way slower than their first half. And that's the problem if you went out too fast. If you pace yourself smart and you pace yourself conservatively and run at a manageable effort, you're still going to have energy at that halfway point to make it to the 20 mile mark and to still run that last 10K. And now that last 10K is real key. So 
we would call that an even split race. You run your first half in 145, you run your second half in 145. That's really, really ideal for your fastest time. It's hard to put into practice sometimes because things change over the course of, but if you, you know, things change over the course of the race, but if you still put in a 145 first half and then maybe slow down to a 150 second half, that's still a pretty good pace race. Now, the other aspect is negative splitting. They're actually running the second half faster than the first half, which is a little more rare. It's a little more rare. Even when guys go out and set the world record, they usually positive split by a very slight amount. You run the second half slightly slower than the first half. Uh, it's kind of the nature of the marathon and a lot of distance races. But if you're able to negative split it, uh, that's a good smart strategy as well. So maybe you come through the first half 145, it's too easy. You're able to speed up the second half and run a 143. That would be a negative split effort. A little more rare. Uh, it means you probably had more left in the tank and you could actually run faster and go out faster. But a very uh, unique thing to do and a very smart thing to do maybe for your a great marathon experience. And being able to move in that last 10K is really key. So we're moving up in distance to the race. Now you get to the 20 mile mark. The 20 mile mark uh, is what we call 32 kilometers. Uh, is what we call the half halfway point really in the marathon. Uh, and that's what you know veterans have always told me from, from way back in the day for decades. The halfway point of the marathon race is the 20 mile mark, uh, 32 kilometers in, because everything that happens in that last 10K, you could lose all your time in that last 10K or that last uh, 6.2 miles that you banked in the first 20 miles or the first 32K. So, you know, it really comes down to that. That's about when people start to hit the wall. Again, you could check out uh, some of my videos on marathon nutrition, fueling strategy, hydration strategy as well. At the end of this video, I'll link to that as well as uh, the playlist uh, extensive training talks. But that point is really key. Uh, and you're not going to be feeling great probably when you get to that point in the race. It's late in the race. You still have a ways to go. But if you could just maintain pace, you're going to be passing people. You're going to be blowing by people. Most people really, really struggle in that last 10K uh, because they went out too fast and they're hitting the wall really hard or they're getting really dehydrated. They have really bad muscle fatigue. And you will feel muscle fatigue. A marathon is never easy. It's never been easy for me. I've run dozen, over a dozen over the years uh, and even training at really high mileage. It takes its toll on your legs. It takes its toll in, in, in your hydration. And you will be running low on fuel at that point, even if you're taking carbohydrate sources in pretty consistently. Uh, but if you could just maintain pace, that is really the key uh, to excellent marathon pace strategy. And even if you slow down a little bit, even if you're slowing down 10, 15 seconds per mile or uh, eight seconds per kilometer about uh, in that last 10K, it's gonna be okay. Like you're still finishing pretty strong. Uh, the idea is really just not to bonk really hard in the last 10K and to be able to still move efficiently. And you know, it's a challenge, but that's I think why we do the sport and why it's so rewarding to finish a distance like a marathon. But again, you know, you could extrapolate from your half marathon time. Hopefully you're doing some specific marathon workouts. Again, check out our playlist. We have extensive half marathon, marathon training types of workouts and how to structure a program. Uh, that's my final note on marathon pacing. Thanks so much for all your support, guys. Thanks to all the supporters on Patreon for making this all possible, as well as all the people that follow me on social media. I'm at Sage Candidate on uh, Twitter and Instagram. Also, have Sage Candidate fan page on Facebook. Be sure to check out our Facebook page, Sage Running, uh, as well as our website, sagerunning.com, where we sell training plans. Put the link up right there. We have a free aerobic base building plan, half marathon plans, marathon plans, Boston qualifying marathon plans, ultra marathon training plans, things like that. Uh, thanks so much. Be sure to subscribe uh, for more videos like this. Uh, share and comment if you like these types of videos. Definitely uh, check out Sandy's channel as well for more uh, training talks and videos. I'll link to it there. Uh, and stay tuned for more Sage Running videos.